Hey everybody, uh, it's actually been a while since I've made one of these, and I'm getting back into making these videos again. Although, don't expect them on a weekly basis, since they do take quite a lot of time to make, so whenever I've got some free time, I'll try to make some time to make one of these. Some of you have probably been wondering why I've been absent since about Monday on YouTube, and that's because at the beginning of the week, I had some computer problems, which at first I couldn't figure out what was going on. So. You know, I eventually sort of looked around and tried to figure out what was wrong and, you know, the motherboard was kind of screwed up, so replaced the motherboard. Problem persisted. Couldn't really figure out what was going on until today and was told by, um, you know, the store that I sent my computer to get diagnosed at that it was a CPU failure. So, bought a new CPU and um, back at it. Anyway, so today's Know Your Ship video is going to be on the Gnievni class destroyers. Uh, and in game right now, um, the Gnievni appears as the tier 5 premium Soviet destroyer, the Gram Yashi. Ever since I got this ship probably around the closed beta stages, I've been wondering about this particular class of ship in real life. You know, we've all heard stories about the US Navy's destroyers like the Fletcher and all those things, but the Soviet destroyers stories during World War II is almost non-existent and in most cases almost feel like it's been lost. So, decided to find out a little bit about the ship, and hopefully, uh, during this episode, I'll teach you a little bit about them as well. Their stories are actually pretty interesting. So, let's start our story off in the early 1930s. Now, at the time, the majority of the destroyers in the naval forces of the Soviet Union were pretty outdated. I mean, most of them were ships from before World War I even. And these ships could not really accomplish many of the missions that a modern navy was required to do in the 1930s. So finally, in 1931, it was decided to design and build a new series of destroyers under the second five-year plan. With the help of Italy, a final design that looked a lot like the Italian Maestro-class destroyers was developed. This design was designated Project 7. In fact, the ships of the Gnievni class can also be referred to as the Sevens. 36 Project 7 destroyers were initially planned, but only 30 were ever built. The Project 7 destroyers, when completed, were comparable to the best destroyers in the world at the time. In terms of their main armament, speed, these destroyers were certainly on par with almost everything else available at the time. However, the Project 7 destroyers did have a fundamental weakness. They had a very, very weak anti-aircraft armament, and this would affect them during their wartime operations. Still, let us take a look at the ship's specifications in a little bit more detail. The Project 7 destroyers, prior to the beginning of World War II, displaced 2,215 tons when fully loaded. However, by 1943, and with wartime experience, their displacement had reached 2,350 tons from the additional equipment that was put onto the ship. The ships were 112.8 meters long, they had a 10.2 meter beam, and a 4.8 meter draught. In terms of propulsion, the Project 7 destroyers had two shaft GTZA 24 geared steam turbines with either three or four boilers. Now there is a little bit of discrepancy when it comes to this particular thing. On some websites and on some books, I've definitely seen three as the quoted figure, while on others I have seen four. Still, there does seem to be a consensus with regards to how much power these ships were able to output, as they did output roughly 50,000 shaft horsepower, which was able to push these Project 7 destroyers to about 38 knots and beyond. Now this is actually really, really fast for a destroyer, so these destroyers were very good when it came to speed. However, they did not have very, very good range. At full speed, they were only capable around 770 nautical miles, which is around 1,430 kilometers. At reduced speed, they were capable of around uh, 1,670 nautical miles, or around 3,000-ish kilometers. In terms of crew, these ships had a wartime crew of 246. Now let's take a look at their armament in a little bit more detail because, well, that's what makes a warship a warship, right? The Project 7 class destroyers were equipped with four of these 130mm B-13 guns. There were two of them in the front and two of them in the rear. The guns could be depressed to minus 5 degrees and elevated to 45 degrees. The guns fired a 33.4 kilogram shell out to a range of approximately 25,400 meters. They were capable of firing once every 6 to 8 seconds. The guns did have a very, very high muzzle velocity between 820 to 870 meters per second. The guns were open to the rear, but did have a 13 millimeter shrapnel shield at the front. Training and elevating the gun was done completely by hand, although fire control was done centrally. 
The very first guns of this design, however, had major problems. The grooves in the barrels were not deep enough, which caused excessive barrel wear and led to very, very short barrel life. In fact, barrel life was so bad that each gun was only capable of shooting about 130 rounds before it had to be replaced. This meant that a destroyer couldn't even empty its own magazines before it had to have its gun swapped out. Eventually, by increasing the depth of the grooves from 1mm to 2.7mm, the barrel life increased to 1,100 rounds, which was actually respectable. Strangely enough, and this is something that kind of is confusing, the Soviets had a few variations of the exact same gun, this 130mm gun. However, in each of them, they did something a little bit different, and the various different versions of the same gun could not fire standard 130 millimeter ammunition. They all had to have their own unique kinds of ammunition, which is very, very strange. Um, another fun fact, actually, about this particular gun was that the Soviets mounted this naval gun to a single tank destroyer, the Su 100Y. That's right, that is the box tank destroyer from World of Tanks. And yeah, it actually had a naval destroyer gun packed into a tank, so you can figure out how much destructive power that thing had when it was used against armored vehicles. The Gnievny class destroyers also carry torpedoes, which were quite good. They carry two triple launchers for Type 53-39 torpedoes. These Type 53 torpedoes were 7.5 meters long, and they carried an explosive charge of 317 kilograms. But most notably, these torpedoes were actually pretty fast for the ranges that they were operating at. They were capable of 4,000 meters range, doing 51 knots, an 8,000 meter range, doing 39 knots, and a 10,000 meter range, doing 34 knots. These Russian torpedoes were definitely comparable to the torpedoes carried by the US Navy's Flesher class destroyers, the Mark 15 torpedoes, which were capable of 45 knots going to 5,500 meters, uh, and 33.5 knots going out to 9,150 meters. So, you know, these Russian torpedoes were definitely some of the best uh, torpedoes used by the Allied navies anywhere in the world at the time. The primary weakness, however, of the Project 7 destroyers lay in their anti-aircraft guns. The Sevens carried a pretty lackluster AA outfit during their service during World War II. Out of these guns, they carried two of these 76.2mm AA guns, which could elevate up to 82 degrees, and fire a 6.5 kilogram shell up to a maximum altitude of 9,250 meters. The rate of fire of these AA guns was between 10 to 20 rounds per minute. However, if you notice, they only fire one per side, so the arcs up for these guns weren't exactly great. Later on in the war, however, with the realization on how important anti-aircraft fire would be to protect ships against air attack, at least some of the 7s were upgraded to carry the 37mm 70-KA guns. These were capable of firing roughly 150 rounds per minute, out to a max range of 8,400 meters and a max height of 5,000 meters. The Project 7 destroyers that were upgraded with this 37mm gun carried four of them in total. Finally, in terms of close-range anti-aircraft protection, the Project 7 destroyers carried a few 12.7mm machine guns. Now, compared to a destroyer like the Fletcher, for example, which packed between 6 to 10 40mm Bofors and 7 to 10 20mm Orlikans, goes to show you just how lacking in anti-aircraft fire the Project 7 destroyers were in comparison. This weakness in anti-aircraft protection did come back to hound the Project 7 destroyers during their service during World War II, as a few of them were lost to air attack. Finally, the Project 7 destroyers carried between 60 to 95 mines and also approximately 25 depth charges. While the ships did suffer a bit from structural weaknesses and vibration, they nevertheless did bring the Soviet Navy to a new level in terms of quality and allowing them to essentially be on par with many other modern navies in terms of their destroyers. So let's take a look at the service history of these Project 7 destroyers during World War II. During the Second World War, many of the Project 7 destroyers did not engage in much naval combat. While some of the ships were involved in the escort of convoys and the occasional naval skirmish here and there, many of the destroyers of this class were involved in supporting troops on the ground, either by providing fire support or ferrying reinforcements in. For example, on June the 24th of 1942, the Project 7 destroyer the Blizzl Blishny managed to break through to Sevastopol during the Siege of Sevastopol to deliver the men of the 142nd Marine Infantry Brigade. The ship then transported the wounded out of Sevastopol. 
In the first six months of 1942, the Blizoblishny delivered to safety 1,753 people, including 260 who were bedridden. The destroyer's luck, however, was not to last. At 1857 of June the 26th of 1942, while attempting to deliver the rest of the 142nd Marine Infantry Brigade to Sevastopol, it was attacked by more than 20 German bombers. The ship received several direct hits including the aft bridge, the first boiler room, and the forecastle, and sank within minutes. Out of all the crew and soldiers the ship was carrying to Sevastopol, only three survived to be picked up the next day by submarines. Another Project 7 destroyer, the Baldre, would also spend the majority of its career supporting ground forces. For instance, on December 21st of 1941, the Baldre would spend her entire day firing at enemy air and ground forces. By the end of the day, she had expended 420 130mm shells, 83 of its 76mm shells, 292 of its 37mm shells, and approximately 450 12.7mm bullets. The ship's AA gunners also managed to shoot down a Junkers Ju-88. By the end of the war, the Baudre had fired a substantial amount of ammunition at enemy surface targets and air targets, including over 1,300 130mm shells and close to 1,076mm shells. However, during its entire service during World War II, it never once used its torpedoes or anti-submarine weapons. The Gremyashi, however, did engage in some naval action, and from everything I've seen so far, was probably one of the best known Gnevni class destroyers. In fact, this whole class is sometimes even referred to as the Gremyashi class. For instance, on the 22nd of August 1941, alongside three other Soviet ships, the Gremyashi damaged a German submarine depot ship with torpedoes. At roughly the same time, she also repelled an enemy air attack and shot down one aircraft in the process. The Grams spent the majority of her Second World War career escorting the Northern Arctic convoys, and was probably most notable for one convoy in particular, Convoy PQ-13. On the 29th of March 1942, the German destroyer Z-26 attacked Convoy PQ-13. The Grem and the other escorts returned fire, forcing the Z-26 to withdraw. Later on, the German destroyer Z-24 and Z-25 also attacked the convoy and were once again driven off by the escorting British and Russian ships. This marked probably one of the rarer occasions where a Soviet destroyer was actively involved in engaging an enemy naval surface combatant. Since I mentioned earlier that the majority of the Project 7 destroyers were involved in supporting ground forces. Now, the Kremyashi spent pretty much the majority of 1942-43 escorting convoys. And finally, in October of 1944, the Grimyashi participated in some short bombardment in support of troop landing operations. But right after that, from October the 16th to December the 8th of 1944, the Grimyashi was back on her escort missions. Finally, on the 14th of December 1944, she was put into dock for an overhaul. The Grimyashi story would end in 1957 near Novaya Zemlaya. The Grimyashi was to be expended during nuclear testing. Out of the original 30 Project 7 destroyers, 7 was sunk through enemy action. The majority of the ships that were sunk were caused by air attack, with the rest being from mines. After World War II, the majority of these ships were scrapped, although two were used in nuclear testing, and a few others were used as targets. Our story, however, continues with the four ships that were sold to the People's Republic of China, as the four destroyers of the Ansan class. These comprised of Ansan, Fusun, Changchun, and Taiyuan, China purchased these ships for an incredibly high price of 17 tons worth of gold, but since the other world powers at the time refused to sell China any ships, there really was no alternative and they had to purchase from the Soviet Union. These destroyers that were acquired by China were most notably modernized by the removal of their torpedo tubes and the installation of the HY-2 or Haiying R anti-ship missiles, which were basically Chinese-made derivatives of the P-15 Termit or the SSN-2. These turned the Project 7 destroyers into guided missile destroyers, and these ships gave the People's Liberation Army Navy experience operating ocean-going warships, and paved the way for the PLAM to build and deploy their own Type 51 Luna-class destroyers. By the 1990s, all ships of the Ang Sang class have been withdrawn from active service. The Ang Sang, or pennant number 101, has been turned into a museum ship at the Qingdao Naval Museum. Changchun, which is also listed as a museum ship, is apparently in very, very poor shape as she hasn't been restored properly, while Taiyuan is currently a stationary training ship at the Dalian Naval Academy. 
And of course, if any of you ever happen to be visiting China and be close to Qingdao, I probably recommend you guys go visit the Qingdao Naval Museum to see the Anxiang and one of these last remaining Project 7 destroyers in person. I think it should be a pretty cool thing to see. And of course, if you are there um, and you can take some photos and send them to me, I would appreciate that a lot. Well, that's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I've certainly had quite a lot of fun doing research on this particular class of ship. And hopefully you learned something interesting about this class of ship as well. Don't forget, if you like this video, um, you know, like this video and sub. I really do appreciate the support. Aside from all that, you all have a great weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the high seas.